So here we have a situation where a person is pulling a, pulling a mask, pulling a box. Uh, they have a rope or a string or some sort, and they're, they're pulling on the box, um, and they're pulling it sideways. Uh, they're trying to move, they're trying to move backwards, they're trying to move this object to the, to the right. Um, and, and they're pulling with a force of 100 newtons, um, but this angle is uh, what we call 36.9 degrees above the horizontal. The reason I use uh, 36.9 and um, 53.1 a lot is because they're the angles of the 3, 4, 5 triangle, so it makes doing um, trig in my head a little easier. So what's happening is as this person pulls the box, um, you know, they're going to pull the box. The box is going to move just sideways. The idea is the box does not move up at an angle that they're pulling. That's not what's happening. So the idea is that the per person's pulling up at an angle, but there's enough weight to keep the box on the ground. So the, the box is just going to slide sideways. Um, and we, we've experienced that where you're kind of pulling sideways, but you're also kind of pulling upward as this happens. So that's what's going on with this. Now, we don't know if it's accelerating or not. Um, we're going to find out. Um, I just said that the velocity is sideways to the right because I know I want I do want to say that the, the object is moving um, Right now for this beginning problem uh, I'm going to assume that we're going to ignore friction. So Maybe for whatever reason we have this object on wheels And so we can say that there is no friction involved with this particular problem and that will change um in a little bit. So actually, let me make this a little bigger so I can kind of erase them a little bit later. So we got this object on wheels. It's, it's, it's rolling. There's no friction. We're pulling at an angle. And so we're, we're going to ask, well, well what's, what's, what's going on with the motion? You know, are we accelerating? Are we not accelerating? Well, I mean, right now we can kind of assume we're accelerating because we're, we're going to be pulling one way, but there's no resistance for us. So we can assume there's going to be some kind of acceleration uh, to the right. Um, so we know we're moving to the right, um, and it probably was an acceleration. So what's going on? Well, as always, free body diagram. One of the first things you do is a free body diagram. So we draw the object. Now we're not going to draw a free body diagram of the person. We, we really are only interested in the object. So the purpose of a free body diagram is to draw the forces acting on that object. Okay. Well, if the person is pulling up at that angle, that's going to be a force um, up at an angle, like such, and that has an angle of 36.9 degrees. And that's our pulling force, and we're going to label that 100 newtons. Okay. Now, we have other forces acting on this object. Well, the one force we always have acting on an object is gravity, right? So gravity is acting downward. And gravity, we can calculate off to the side somewhere if we need to. And the other, so we do have gravity, so we put that in there, gravity. And we do, uh, we do have the normal force, right? So we do have um, the normal force pushing up from the ground. And so that is here. And in this case, we do not have a resistance force. So we don't have a friction acting backwards. Um, we will. That's actually the next example. So we know some things here. We can figure some things out. Um, one of the first things that students like to do, even though I put it in a line item later, and we can figure out the gravity if that force due, force due to gravity, we can figure out the weight if the mass is given, and it is. So force due to gravity is m times g, which is 20.0, 9.81. And so we can um, calculate that and have it on deck. And 196. So we know this to be 196.2. Um, like I said, we could have figured that out later. Um, so to figure out the motion, 
we're most concerned with the x motion. And so that's pretty simple. We're going to do x motion and summation of the forces in the x equal. Now, we're assuming, since there's no resistance force, that ma is probable. Um, well, the question is, well, what forces are acting in the x direction? Well, that's a good question. Because I have... I have this pushing force, and it's kind of in the x direction, but it's also kind of in the y direction. So what does that mean? Oh yeah, it means vectors. That means you have to break that up into to, to its components. You have to break that up into fx, and we have to break that up into fy. We have to break that up. And so in the in the x direction, um, which I really should have put um, here. Which is, well, we only have a part of this pulling force acting in the x direction. And Again, off to the side, we can calculate the, um, the x and y components. We should realize that the fx component is equal to f cosine theta. And if I verify this 100 times the cosine of that angle, well, cosine of that angle should be um, 4 fifths. So that should be 80 newtons. And and you can you should do it, be able to enough trig to verify that yourself. And if I do the y, and that's f sine theta, you should be able to verify that that's 60 newtons. So this should be 80. And this should be, well, I can't even draw it in there. I don't have enough room. So I'm going to just leave that out there. But you, you should be able to make those determinations. So, uh, um, you know what? I made Fn brown. I'm going to change Fn. Um, I'm going to change that color because it's not going to work if I did the other components. That's my bad. So let's make the normal force. Let's make it purple, shall we? Let's make that normal force purple. So that normal force needs to come. Okay. So we have these components and the only x component or the only x force I'm sorry is that component. We only have fx. The x part of the pulling force. That's the only force acting in the x. And that's pretty easy then. That's pretty easy because because you're like, well, you know, I know that's worth 80. And I know the mass is 20.0 and acceleration. So the acceleration is equal to positive 4.00 meters per second squared. It's moving to the right, according to our picture, at this positive acceleration, which is awesome. So we're done. But there's one thing I want to show you that didn't really matter in this problem, but will matter very much in the next problem. And that's what's going on in the y direction. In the y direction, we assume equilibrium. We assume equilibrium because again, if I go here and I look at this, this is going to move side to side. It isn't going to start woo, going up or woo, falling down. Only side to side. So that means there's no acceleration in the y direction. And that means that all my y forces must balance. Well, okay, let's look at the y forces. We have normal force, and that's positive. And we have gravity. 
and that's negative. But we also have, and it's very important to notice, that we have a y portion over here pointing upward of the pulling force. That, I'll, I'll do it again, we have the y portion of the pulling force acting upward. And that's important. That needs to be taken into, into account. And so we have an additional force in the y direction, which we have not had before. And this is going to equal zero. Well, what does that do? Well, it's important that right now you realize that the normal force is no longer equal to the gravity. Because I have this other force that's hanging, hang, that's going to influence the overall balance of forces in the y direction. I remember I warned you, normal force will not always be equal to gravity. And now that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna be that's gonna be a big part of problems. We cannot always assume that the normal force and gravity are the same because a lot of the problems it will not be. We don't know what the normal force is. We do happen to know what the gravity is. Matter of fact, we had calculated that earlier. And we even do know what the y portion of the force is because we calculated that, that we said that was 60. That y portion of the pulling force. And so what that does is it makes the normal force, if you do the math, 136.2 newtons. Now remember, you know, gravity, force gravity is 196 downward. The normal force is only 136 upward. They're not the same. Normal force is reduced by 60. Why? Because the ground did not have to support 60 newtons of weight because the upward force was helping. Meaning, when I'm looking at the crate here, this crate, yes, it's feeling a sideways force, but it's also feeling a little bit of upward force. And so what's happening is, get these motions out of the way. What's happening is that, remember this is normal force. And remember this is gravity here. So what's happening is now the normal force and the, and the, the extra little bit of up force, they're partnering together and they acting together are balancing the gravity. So if the gravity is 196 downward, then this plus this must equal 196 upward. So if you're pulling, but also pulling with a little bit of upward force too, you're helping support the object and the ground doesn't have to support as much. The normal force won't be as much. Think about that. And think about this, if, if come on, let's get this together, you're gonna do it. If the pulling force were not pulled, if the pulling force were not pulled over and upward, if the pulling force were over and downward, then how would that change the problem? Okay, that's beyond what I've written here, right? But if, if we pulled, if this person was pushing over, but not upward, but downward, that means this normal force, this for normal force, I'm sorry, this Y force would also be downward, and that means the normal force would actually have to be higher than normal. Think about that. That's going to come around in other problems down the line. All right, so we're going to take a break and then we're going to redo this same exact problem, but with friction.